Hey, try some heal. You should buy Overwatch if you can find it for a good deal. Hello, everyone. We're we'll going to talk about Overwatch today. Now, for the case itself, nothing special with that. You do get a skin for uh, one character, which is weird, and a code for a bunch of stuff for a um, card game thing Blizzard has. So, anyway, if you don't know what the hell Overwatch is, Overwatch is a first person shooter or team based game in the vein of like Team Fortress 2, if you ever played Team Fortress 2. Except, if this is where it's probably going to be the most thing here. There's two ways you can look at how we approach the, to uh, the team based system. You can look at it as providing a lot more variety or splitting the butter too thin. Team Fortress 2 has a small job selection of characters. Overwatch has 21 characters that are assigned different roles of being assault to support, defensive, and such. And there are multiple characters in each category. And even like looking at the healing support characters, even though they're all under that same category, they all function differently and have their ups and downs and their advantages for different situations. And I actually enjoy that about Overwatch. A lot of the characters are very situational. It's made in a way to counter each other. Well, Team Fortress Two, you can have almost someone always playing each character almost. I can't remember the max cap on a team in Team Fortress 2. It's been a long time, but overall, you know, between 21 characters, you know, you just can't fulfill every single thing somebody can do. Let alone, there's so many differences, some minor to drastic. I mean, a good variety of the characters have guns, but there are characters who really have no guns. There's a guy running around with a bow. There's a guy with a sword. There's a guy with a hammer. <laughs> Not exactly something you would normally see in a first person shooter, but it being a team based game, it's all about knowing how your team is. If you have a group of friends, it's an excellent game for that. Personally, I find a lot of people with tastes like mine with RPGs and things, it, they like dwelling into first person shooters that are like this, where it's team focused, not Call of Duty just, oh, get the most kills everywhere with it. I mean, playing random matches, I don't usually see a lot of people pick support killers, which are killers that usually heal you. Or provide other backdrop supporting things that can help the team do more damage or such. A lot of people don't usually pick them up very often in randoms. I like doing that, or the ta I like doing the tanks and the support healing classes. Those are the classes I actually like playing a lot, and I feel like a lot of the random games I get in win because of that too. Because I always see a lot of people been complaining that random is a horrible nightmare. Don't do random. Get friends. And obviously, you know, it's going to vary on luck and who and how they think and stuff. But it's about cooperation in that. Now, there are sometimes situations where you may feel like you've been unjustly uh, cheated. But really... The game isn't the type of game you want to focus on one person. Like, when I first started, I was just Morsi all the time. And I even thought one of the other support characters was horrible compared to Morsi until I understood him, Bill. Which was uh, the character wearing the roller skates. He is like an AOE type region healing. Why like Morsi is a direct healer that walks like the mech from Team Fortress 2 with a direct beam that heals a lot more while the skater only does a minor region so basically he can't deal with massive damage to somebody plus they have to be in vision they can't be behind a wall and receive your heals so your movability to keep people in vision is very important as a killer and that was something I had to learn using that killer and I found so in maps work a lot better with him being the healer than Morsi while in other situations Morsi is more fear. 
And then, of course, also depending on the makeup of the other teams at times. And I started branching out more. Like, I was trying Reinhardt, I was trying Roadhog, I tried other characters. I'm finding more uses and I feel like I'm helping my team more. Being able to be like, well, we need somebody with a lot of health. I'm going to go Roadhog then. I am a one man apocalypse. But it's a game I don't think you should go into if you want to whack up kills and lawn one wool. If you want to lawn other classes, you want to work as a team, you don't necessarily need to master everyone, but it's definitely probably the best idea to at least know half of the characters. Obviously, you can't master everyone completely. I suck as a sniper. I am a horrible, horrible sniper. I'm very bad at sniping. So obviously I will never be able to really use the sniper character, even remotely efficiently. But a lot of characters have more than one way to counter them in certain ways. And I've been learning those as I play, or just listening to other people give out tips and ways you can counter things. And it's just something you learn through the play. Kind of like in a odd way, kind of like Dark Souls when you think about it. You just gotta think outside the box. Use the level. Use the skills. Like, for example, the ninja. The ninja character is very squishy, very easy to mortal immensely. But he also can climb walls and pretty much get around the environment vastly way better than almost any character. There's only Black Widow can hookshot the places, and the one chick with the jetpack thing can shoot up in the air, and Winston can do a leap thing, but the ninja can legitimately just one up walls and get to places that other killers can't get to that easily without using special cooldown abilities and stuff. He can do reconnaissance, he can look at things, he can sneak up on things. And he's very dangerous, too, if you know how to use him. I've only used him a few times. He's really not. <laughs> he is not a low beginner character to use because he's very squishy. But I've seen, like, some people who are just really good at him. I mean, he has way... Like, he uses a sword, so you probably like, how the hell does he live? Well, for one thing, he has a move that can counter bullets right back to the people shooting at him. So, when you're... Sh it's like, oh, well, I gotta be careful. I don't want to go too crazy. Like, literally, anyone with, a, like, a huge machine gun damage thing could literally just murder themselves in a second if, the, if they pull that ability out and that... And I could sit here and talk about each individual character and all their abilities and how they fight each other, but... It's just something you learn. Now, um... Getting on to... <clears throat> I'm probably de-wearing a lot here, so... This is a $60 game. For some reason, I keep hearing people say it's a $40 PC game, and I have no idea where that came from. On Blizzard's official site, it's the same price as the console games, and on Amazon, it's the same price as the console games. Now, I got the game for $39. And that's because, for some reason, the last few days of its pre-order on Amazon, it was like, uh, it was either $47, $48, and my 20% got applied to it still. So I got it for a huge steal, but I, I don't know where this PC $40 thing's coming from, because I see nowhere where it's $40. Maybe if it was some early discount thing like a lot of PC games did, but right now it's, I don't know where the heck they're seeing that, but I don't see it anywhere. So it's a full price title on all the systems as far as I tell, unless you get a special discount or deal or something like I was able to do on Amazon. Um, is it worth $60? That, that's a bit of questionable because um, Overwatch basically launched like Splatoon where it's going to have more content through its life, which thankfully it's going to be free. Nothing is paid for. Now, there is microtransactions for um, cosmetic things because all the characters have multiple skins and lines they can say and you also have sprays that you can put on the wall and such. Uh, all cosmetics, nothing that does anything to the actual gameplay or your skill or anything. Uh, you can buy loot crates which are random chances at those things for all those characters. You don't get to choose which kind of stupid. 
Um, it's just basically gambling. Kind of pointless to me, but I guess if you got a dollar or something you want to throw at and hope you get some full character you want, I guess it's there. But uh, it's unnecessary because you get a loot crate every time you level up. And uh, while originally I was curious what the level cap for leveling up is, uh, research has pointed to theoretically being told that it is infinite. Which I find kind of questionably hard to believe because I am sure somebody will somehow max out in nines of some number of cowl, but yeah, that'll probably be a while, but. Uh, but of course you could argue uh, if it would be even possible to not get everything by that time now. Anyway, uh, there was about, I think it was 13 maps, somewhere around there, I believe it was 13. Uh, not a bad launch mount, but uh, I just, I feel like there's not a variety of modes and I'd say one of the things that make me feel like that is a lot of the advertisement and the opening and such. Like the opening for the game and the advertisement and videos about the characters, um, they make you feel like there's just some superhero crisis thing going on. And then you play the maps and they involve moving a vehicle to point A to point B for one team and the other one to stop that team go capture a um, King of the Hill style thing. I mean, uh, this is not a super variety. It, it's pretty much mode, you know, modes that you've seen in a team-based shooter game. Those, um, hopefully, some of the free DLC will be new, interesting modes. Now, of course, what does help mix this all up is, I'm not sure if this is every week or month, I think it's every week, uh, there's a special kind of wool set. Um, the day, the launch week, it had basically where everyone's cooldowns for all their abilities and stuff recharged really fast. Everyone had more health and such. This week, it's the uh, Hanzo, I believe his name is, the guy with the bow, and Genji, which is the ninja. They all matches all those two. And that's it. And they're all on one map. So, um,. That looks like that's how Blizzard's going to try and have some interesting uh, other modes, you could say, for the time being. Um, and that can have some chaotic uh, fun, but I would like an actual legitimate, some other interesting modes. Because um, in a story sense of how the game's opening and such is... None of this really feels connected to it at all, and I understand that being an online multiplayer game thing, you can argue that's pretty much pointless, but I, I don't know. If you followed any of the advertisement, it just felt like odd to me. It, it's just, it's a minor complaint. It's not something I'm trying to say you should seriously consider that as a fact and not buy the game at all, but I, I do feel slightly odd that it be, the, it doesn't feel connected to it, if you know what I mean. Um, there's not too much complicated about uh, the menus and everything. Uh, you do have a capability of having a bot mode and such. You can make bots and custom rules and such, but only for you and anyone you invite to it. You can't do it in a online random look for people thing which kind of sucks in that regard because that would also offer some more variety so um i do find it odd that you can't play that mode offline which is kind of stupid in my opinion but i'm i'm going to assume some of the diablo thing that they are just doing it so people have a harder time to hack and mod shit and stuff which I can understand being a game that is, I mean, I understand a little more in this versus Diablo 3, where this is a competitive multiplayer thing. Well, you know, Diablo 3 was something you really can play by yourself. Other people is an option. So that was really stupid to be online only on the PC. But, um, yeah. Even the console versions have no offline mode for the bots, so that's kind of weird to me. You have to go online. As far as I also understand, um, you do have to be gold in PlayStation Plus if you're doing console. So, um, it has that negative effect too. 
So, uh, and, and, you know, I know there's people who don't like playing that, and that's a fair assessment, though. So if, uh, if that bothers you, there's the PC version, which is supposedly $40 somewhere, which I still don't know where the hell that is. Um, anything else to really touch up upon? I mean, I, uh, the microtransaction thing has gone kind of a up and down thing. Some people said it's really stupid, and some people was like, eh. Um, with the cosmetic thing, I don't really see as a big deal, because, I mean, it's cosmetic. You can still get it. It's random. The only thing I think I would have liked a little bit is um, you do have a currency, for, sometimes you can get currency outright from the loot box, or if you get a repeat item, that will be cashed in for a certain percentage under the value that it would cost to buy it with currency. So you do build up currency, but it's not always. It's only sometimes you might get, or if you get a dupe item that you already have. I think it probably would have been a little nicer to give just a little currency every single box but that's just me i'm sure that's counter to them trying to get money though so i mean i get that as well but i mean you can get everything without paying for it so i, I don't really see a big deal especially since it's cosmetic i mean i've got a few nice skins and i got about 500 currency i'm at like level 20 so uh, i mean like if you want the best Wayless skins or a thousand currency, so I'd say probably by 30 or 40 level, I probably will have that much. I'd say probably 30 because I'm starting to get duplicates of like here and there, so I'd say probably around 30, you're probably likely to get close to a thousand currency. Probably, unless you get really lucky on a lot of not duplicate things. Overall, overall though, um. Of course, I'm basing this on the launch, you know, there's no information on the free content or anything. I really do enjoy Overwatch, it's really fun to play with friends. I got to play with Pixie and Matt, and uh, they had several friends. We actually were able to have a full team in there, and it, it is fun to coordinate with your friends and everything. To counter and push your objective that you need to be done. Randoms, mixed bag of that. Personally, I think it's just if you help with the support when nobody's being support, that that will help your team a lot more. Uh, but is it worth sixty dollars if you're not getting any type of deal on it? That's a bit tricky. I really am enjoying it, but I'm not sure if I would pay sixty dollars day one. I mean, like I said, I paid thirty nine dollars. That's a pretty good deal as a pre-order price for a brand new full price game. <laughs> I was gonna wait a while before I got Overwatch and I got a good deal on it. But I, I, I'm not sure if I would really pay $60. That's one of the reasons I skipped out on Garden Warfare 2 for Plants vs. Zombies. I just kind of figured I don't really see why I should just be there day one because it's doing the same thing with its original game where it's going to have free content so I figured I might as well just give it some time, what build up some of that content. But it's free so I mean it's going to come, the only negative effect is you won't get to know what you're going into well if I you know, wait and see what does come out, I get no idea of that. So, that, that would be the negative thing. I'm really enjoying it. If you enjoy this type of game, it probably would be worth the $60. I, I don't really dislike the 21 characters. So there's a lot of debate whether they're spreading the bottles too thin or not. But I think because the, really, the design really seems pointed towards wanting you to switch out to be like well they got this I need to do this so I can counter this hey you need to change this so we can counter this you push this you shield this and that I'll heal you oh they changed to those guys I need to do this and blow up rockets and shit and that you know it's it's not designed for you to just pick a killer and that's the killer that you're gonna be the entire round it wants you to switch on the fly to counter each other and keep doing that until you win, no lose. And I feel like that's one of the 
important things that people got wrong is you can't just always stick to the same character. You need to have get at least five characters under your belt that you're really good at and you will help your team a lot more than knowing only that one character. But if you have any questions about Overwatch, please leave a comment down below. I think it's worth a good 40, 50 maybe, but I don't know, I, I'm kind of iffy on 60 on complete launch without knowing what any of the free content is and with microtransactions, which ain't that horrible, but there's still microtransactions in a full price game, which I usually consider pre BS in a full price game. I mean, if it was cheaper than, you know, microtransactions is a balancement to that. You know, we're giving you the game for 20 bucks, but the microtransactions are there so we can make up back. See, you know? See that kind of thing would make more sense. But uh, they're not forced, you know, it's not like it's locking you out of content or skills or anything. I'm enjoying it, and I like how um, it's not like a lot of Call of Duty games where you locked out guns and shit through your level progression. Your level progression literally just shows how long you played and your um, getting your loot points. Oh, actually, I did think of one more minor complaint I have about Overwatch. At the end of a match, you have player of the game or a play of the game. I don't know why it doesn't say play over Apple. Uh, it's usually a short highlight of what was, you know, the best skilled moment of that round. And it's almost 99% guaranteed it's going to be someone who did a lot of kills. Which, understandably, you know, that's that shows a good sign for that person's team. But I've only seen, and I'm like, like I said, I'm like 21, 20, 21, 22 or something level in that. I've got uh, like 60 plus hours in the game in that. I've only seen two support classes ever be player of the game. And I think that's kind of a disservice because I don't usually see a lot of people pick support killers. Because I usually wait for about the last 10 seconds to see somebody else is going to pick a support character. And a lot of times I have to pick support character because nobody else wants to be one. That's why a lot of times when I first started I stuck with Marcy because a lot of times nobody was picking a heal. Uh, but I, I would like to see it give a little more variety to who could be player, or maybe they could make a player of the game offense and defensive. That way you're awarding the people offensive and the people who are being support defensive with healing, blocking damage there, maybe something like that. But uh, if they're gonna only do just one, I think it needs to have something to help support walls get more recognition. So. That's about the only real complaints I got about Overwatch, really. Um, I I am really enjoying it, but I, I just don't know about $60 at the moment. It's just... Mm, I don't know. If you got a lot of fun to play with it, that's probably good. But overall, I, I am enjoying it. I got a good deal for it, so I can't really complain about that too much. Let me know if you have any questions down below, like I said. And I will see you next time. Thank you. Got you in my sights. No!